Hello friends, so today we are going to solve the plan physiology questions from BHU 2014. Uh, also to note that to th uh, plan physiology questions are of the difficulty level which comes for the entrance exams. We should be prepared well for it. So let's just start. Our first question is molybdenum deficiency affects the activity of options 1 nitrogenase, 2 nitrate reductase, 3 chlorate reductase and 4 all of the above. So first of all we will we know that nitrogenase and nitrate reductase both are actually used for nitrogen fixation but nitrogenase is used in biological nitrogen fixation and nitrate reductase is used in nitrate assimilation and both this uh, enzymes use the cofactor molybdenum and when this you can't choose on one or two because both are right so you know the last option all of three above uh, seems correct and also chlorate reductase which we all know, might not be knowing but yeah it also has the molybdenum cofactor so our answer is number four next question in a blue green algae the structure specialized for nitrogen fixation is 1. Akinete, 2. Heterocyst, 3. Aplanospores, that will be Aplanospores, not Aplanospores. Number 4. Endospores. Now, what are Akinetes? Akinetes are just spores which are non motile and they also have envelope around them, very thick wall. These are spores produced, uh, created for the, you know, for the survival during the desiccation period. But heterocysts, heterocysts are in the blue green algae, they are, they are differentiated cells which are helps in the nitrogen fixation. So clearly our answer is number two. But what are aplanospores? These are non-motile asexual spores again. But what is the difference between akinate is that aplanospores forms a new kind of cell wall around them which are not different from the ones which the parent cell had. So that is the difference and endospores are actually found in the bacteria and uh, they are produced again to survive the desiccation period. Next is next question. How many electrons are involved in the reduction of nitrate to ammonia? Okay, so uh, we have to this is a level difficulty question. So we have to know the uh, reactions from nitrate to ammonia. There are this occurs in two pathways, right? First nitrate to nitrate, then nitrate to ammonia. We will see a picture here. Uh, in this picture, we can see that nitrate uh, in the presence of NADPH and H plus and two electrons forms the nitrite. Then nitrite in the presence of six ferrodoxin and reduced uh, and eight H plus and six electrons, it forms ammonia uh, and yeah. To, um, to H2O but then nitrate to ammonia will be the electrons will be 2 electrons plus 6 electrons making it total of 8 electrons so our answer will be number 1 next question ok uh, here the question is in dark so I will just read it out first uh, respiratory quotient for germinating carbohydrate seeds ok is uh, the, they have given the values in the options is it 1 less than 1 more than one or it varies okay what is respiratory quotient it is just the ratio of the amount of carbon dioxide evolved or given out to the amount of oxygen uh, absorbed by a plant or the by a yeah plant body but uh, so it dif it values differs when is it it's a carbohydrate or when it's a protein okay so if it's carbohydrate then if we write the equation C6 H12 O6 plus 6 O2 the photosynthesis reaction the then uh, forms 6 CO2 plus 6 H2 all right so that is when here we can write the RQ which is equal to CO2 by O2 clearly we can see 6 CO2 is evolved so we will write 6 and then 6 O2 is evolved then in below also we will write 6 and when it gets cut so it comes to unity right so clearly uh, our answer is 1 there next question uh, which of the following exhibits the highest rate of respiration 
is it growing shoot apex germinating seed root tip or leaf buds it's a, a fact based question and very easy actually it's always the germinating seed which requires the highest rate of respiration because uh, they need they respire to fulfill the high energy needs of a seedling right and we have also done this experiment in our college uh, bsc right okay next question glyoxylate cycle takes place in glyoxylate cycle takes place in the glyoxysomes but what are these glyoxysomes these are specialized plant peroxisomes and these plant peroxisomes have the key enzyme isocitrate lyase and malate synthase which are required for the glyoxylate cycle okay so what this glyoxylate cycle does is it converts fatty acids to the acetyl coa so from here the our answer is number 2 not uh not mitochondria and uh, not both of a and b only the glyoxysomes next question uh 81 okay right the presence of auxin was first demonstrated by is it charles darwin kogel f w went or hagen smith now we shouldn't be confused with went over here who first demo you know who did the uh, experiment but it was first demonstrated by presence of auxin demonstrated by charles darwin so this our answer is number 1 next question uh, 82 cytokinins cause uh, this are plant hormone questions and also this are very important uh, we should revise the plant hormone part and their roles and functions our options are cell division expansion of cotyledons and leaves delay in senescence all of the above we know that cytokinin is a very important hormone and it does all of the above given right next question so our answer is actually number 4 over here so okay question number 83 increase in the polyamine level inhibits uh, is it auxin activity is it gibberellin activity ethylene activity or all of the above we know that polyamine activity polyamine levels act um, you know affects all the plant hormones present but most importantly it is an anti senescence uh, hormone so uh, it inhibits the ethylene activity which actually promotes senescence so our answer here is number 3 next question each monomer of phytochrome has uh, is it 1 chromophore 2 chromophore 3 or 5 chromophores now this is tricky because uh, what is a phytochrome what's the structure of a phytochrome actually phytochrome is a dimer we will draw it here and uh, dimer uh, has chromophore and apoprotein part but you have to notice that they have asked each monomer so among the two dimers we are talking about only one of it one part of it because they have asked for a monomer and one monomer itself has one chromophore and one apoprotein so here it won't be two chromophores but one chromophore so be uh, careful one is the correct answer okay next question translocation of water and mineral is uh, is it apoplastic is it symplastic is it both a and b or none of the above translocation of water and mineral has no barriers and it uh, translocation of water is both apoplastic and symplastic okay so our answer will be number 3 both a and b next question allosteric enzymes for which substrate and modulators are identical is called what is it homotropic uh, heterotropic isotropic or mixotropic well since the, you have to be careful about the word they have said it is identical so we will go for the option homotropic our answer will be number 1 next question okay uh, solute if mixed with water is it does it what it does to the water potential so basically they are asking the effect of solute on water potential that is also termed as solute potential or the osmotic potential now when um, solute is mixed with water it actually binds with the water molecules and therefore it reduces the free energy of the water and when the free energy of the water is reduced the 
low it lowers the capacity of the water to move and do its work therefore in order in this way it lowers the water potential answer will be number 2 next is guttation guttation results because of what actually uh, in night when the soil is moist and root absorbs the water root continuously absorbs water so when there is extra water absorbed in the plant and it is not utilized by the plant at night so due to this root pressure caused there will be a root pressure and that results in squeezing squeezing out of the water from the leaves or the blades of the plant in the form of water drops and this uh, are actually released from the xylem sap right so basically guttation is just similar to root pressure it's just due to root pressure so our answer is number 3 next question uh, pumps are characterized as transport proteins across the membrane linked with is it nadph is it atp is it nad plus or adp from uh, any protein which uh, acts as a pump requires atp right so our answer will be number 2 Okay next question which of the following energy rich phosphorus compound phosphorus compound is known as the universal currency of energy right uh, we have been learning this since class 5 that the energy currency of a cell is atp so our answer is number 2 that is adenosine triphosphate next question 93 quantosomes are related with what uh, is it respiration photosynthesis transpiration or beta oxidation well quantosomes are particles which are found in where in the thylakoid membrane to do what uh, they consist of the chloroplast and where the photosynthesis takes place they are composed of lipids and proteins that include various photosynthetic pigments and redox carriers basically there will be since they are present in the thylakoid membrane and so they are associated with photosynthesis our answer is number 2 next question 94 photosynthetic oxygen evolution in plants is inhibited by and there in the options they have given us few inhibitors uh, with short names we uh, this is again a difficulty level question and so we have to be careful and options are dccd which is actually a atps inhibitor it inhibits the f0 f1 atp synthase complex right so it is not affecting photosynthesis so this won't be our answer next is dcmu dcmu is actually an inhibitor of photosynthesis what it does it blocks the qb of plastoquinone ps2 it um, the electron transport is blocked we will uh, give a no, image over here yeah so in the image we can clearly see where the dcmu is acting and it's inhibiting the photosynthesis and by blocking qb of the ps2 okay so next uh, is next option is methyl violagen what it does it is also inhibitor uh, which is we are not uh, really aware of uh, but yeah next is arsenate it also inhibits atp formation during glycolysis but from here photosynthesis inhibitor is only dcmu okay next question which of the following elements take part in the charge separation on oxygen evolving complex so oxygen evolving complex is found below, uh, in the starting of photosynthesis cycle below the ps2 uh, what it is a just a complex which splits water molecules and it splits water molecules into 4h was 4h plus four electrons and an o2 right and so this complex is actually cluster of manganese calcium and chloride ions so from this four options uh, iron molybdenum copper and manganese our answer will be manganese but we should also uh, be aware of the factors of iron molybdenum and copper and where they are used next is the end product of oxidative phosphorylation is very important questions the option is nadh oxygen adp and atp plus h2 we will uh, refer a picture over here so from this image we could see that in the krebs cycle and in glycolysis what were the end products and uh, this nadph when they enter the 
oxidative phosphorylation they convert into NADP and stuff but in the end product the ATP and H2O is really next question so our answer was number four which of the following exhibits the highest rate of respiration we have already done this question so our answer was number two next question is uh, electron transport system is located in the mitochondrial and they have given uh, in the options four locations is it outer membrane intermembrane space inner membrane or matrix it's tricky let's just take an image over here and check it out we first think that is of course we know that it's in the inner membrane space the uh, uh, h plus and all they are getting released but that's not where the uh, ETS is located. The ETS is located in a membrane. We have to know that it's a membrane. Is it the outer membrane or the inner membrane? So this oxidative phosphorylation always remember takes place in the inner membrane. Okay, so we should not be confused and yeah, the answer is number three. Next question. Pheophytin is a chlorophyll in which the central magnesium atom has been replaced by boom uh, and they have given four options one manganese atom one iron atom two iron atoms and two hydrogen atoms it's a fact based question and we have to know that the answer is number four that they are replaced with two hydrogen atoms next question active transport of solutes across a membrane against their gradient of electrochemical potential by coupling the uphill transport of one solute to the downhill transport of another is referred to as is it facilitated transport secondary active transport primary active transport or kinetic transport well facilitated transport is not right because it's a passive and not related to active transport but secondary active transport is the right answer because is secondary active, um, active transport definition is just given in the question so here our answer is actually number two okay so the next question the nodb enzyme the not factors uh, which is which we find in the chapter nitrogen metabolism right uh, is encoded by not b gene is what it's a difficulty level question and our answer is that it is a chitin oligosaccharide deacetylase that removes the acetyl group from the terminal non-reducing sugar our answer will be number one here we have ended uh, 2014 questions only but we have answered 22 questions so this number of questions is huge and huge marks is dependent on it uh, revise well thank you for watching